What's up my friend, welcome back to another video. And today I just wanted to share with you three simple tips to really help you um, increase your productivity in your DAW, whether that's Logic, Cubase, Pro Tools, whatever it might be. I'm just gonna use Logic as my example because that's the DAW that I know and use on a day-to-day -day basis. And I think a lot of people get overwhelmed with DAWs to be honest, and really you don't need to know everything about the DAW. I certainly don't. I just know enough to get my music out there. Um, I know enough to be comfortable with the functions to create music quickly and get it out there into the world. And for me, that's the most important. So I hope these three functions will help you. Uh, they're kind of logic specific, but you can also find the same way to do these in your DAW of choice as well. But I think these will be really, really helpful. So the first one that I wanna share with you here is uh, the tool function. And really this is a sort of a general workflow tip. When you press T in logic, it brings up this, this tools uh, menu. And you can really quickly select an additional functionality from this tool menu. So the one that I usually go with the most is either I, so if I wanna cut a region, so I can go T, I, just like that. And now when I hover over a region, you can see there's a scissor icon that pops up. So I can cut a region, I can split it up and maintain the notes across the regions. It's, it's really, really simple. The other one I use a lot is T, A. So T brings up the tool menu and A brings up the fade tool. So I do this a lot for my uh, audio files. Like if I'm singing, I'm recording, um, like recording samples, right? Sometimes I'll want to take an audio file and uh, and fade out or fade in. So let's say we have an audio file. Let me bring up one really quickly here. Let's say we have a loop. Uh, let's bring in a shuffle drum set loop really quickly here. Um, convert track format to stereo. And let's say I want to fade out of it. So let me put my headphones on here so we can actually hear this. And let me actually turn down the volume of this because I think it's really loud. Um, Right, so there's the drum sample. And if I if I actually drag it, you can see I can fade out of it and I can fade into it just like this. So if we zoom in a little bit more, you can see there's the, the two fades that I've created. I can also extend that fade a little more if I wanted to. If we sold that up, now you can see it fades out, right? So that's just a quick rundown of what the fade tool does. So that's the tools menu. And I think um, it can save you a bucket load of time, honestly, instead of having to find those exact tools somewhere else in Logic. You can just press T, bring up the menu, and then you can very easily select that tool just by clicking another letter on your keyboard. That's number one. The second one I think is quite well known, and that is the cycle mode. So cycle mode is basically when you select a certain portion of your track, and when you play it, it starts from the very beginning of that portion, and then when it gets to the end, it basically loops back. So this can be really useful because if you're trying to just work on one specific section of your piece, you don't want it to just you know go from the beginning to the end and then have to restart the piece every single time. This function allows you to do that really, really quickly. So let's say I've written this passage, and now I'm going in and I'm sort of expecting the, the MIDI notes, are the velocities correct? And you can see the logic has repeated that section just because the cycle mode is turned on, right? Maybe this F is a little loud, I'm gonna turn it down. And I can do anything I want within the piano roll because of cycle mode, just like that. It just repeats that section over and over again. So that is, wow, I feel like depressed now just listening to this over and over. It feels like I'm like, it's the end of a, a an anime or drama or something. It's like people are walking away from each other. But yeah, that's the whole point of the cycle mode or cycle loop, if you will. So you can either, like click the top and drag, right? Or you can click this right here. You can click the, the icon at the very top and you can create your own uh, cycle range. But I usually just do the click and drag along the very top if there's a certain portion that I'm trying to repeat. So obviously very useful if you just wanna fix that one section. The third and final thing that is a little bit more nuanced in my opinion is when you wanna rename actual regions. And, and like usually when I'm, creating new tracks, I will list out the name of the instrument that I'm loading the patch for, right? So this is a piano track, this is a strings patch, this is a bass patch, but sometimes I forget to change the name of the track um, after I've, I've recorded in the MIDI performance. So sometimes like I'll load it, it says instrument one or track one, right? And then if I record the region, it's also gonna be called instrument one because that's the name of the track. However, if I change the name of the track to piano, for example, it will not reflect in the MIDI region a lot of the time. So there is a specific key command you can use to get all of your regions to be the same name as the track itself, which is very, very useful for mixing or just grouping and organizing your tracks as uh, in inside of your session. 
So the way you do this is I like to select all my tracks. First of all, I just do command and A and then the shortcut is shift option N shift option N. So you press shift and then option and then N. And now you can see these regions have now been correlated with their respective tracks. Isn't that useful, right? That, that's, that's really, really cool. And that's one thing I, I discovered on my own, actually, um, while working through a session, I was like, oh, I'm realizing so many of these regions in my projects are just not the same name as, you know, uh, the, the tracks themselves. So this shortcut really allows you to do that really quickly. Shift option plus N and that's it. So just a quick recap, number one, use that tool function menu, because if you're trying to get something done, cut a region, fade a region, uh, join things together, solo mute. I mean, you can do that already just by clicking S and M, but like, let's say you want to zoom in and out, you can press Y and you can zoom in and out as well. Right. But I don't really need to do that in this case. Um, I just tend to use these, these on the very top left, uh, top right there. Uh, that's number one. It saves you so much time in the long run. Uh, just being able to select your tools quickly. Number two is you uh, using the cycle mode. So again, instead of selecting the playhead and dragging it to exactly where you want every single time, just use cycle mode to select your region of choice and it will play and loop that specific region over and over again. And the third and finally to name all your tracks the same as, or name all your regions the same as the tracks, just highlight the tracks, do shift option and N and they will automatically do that. Okay. So those are just three simple logic tips. There are quite a lot more that people are mainly aware of and people are usually incorporating into their workflow. But these are three that I think were pretty important that I kind of wanted to share in this video. And actually, I, I have a bit of exciting news to share with you. At the moment of this recording, I've actually just released a, a Logic Pro course for beginners. Um, so there's a lot of like Logic Pro courses out there on the market that I think cover the entire gamut of the software. They take you from beginning to end of every single function and knowing all the knobs and all the faders. And it can be like a 50, 60 hour course. But I think for us composers who just want to get up and running really quickly with our music, a lot of the time we don't have the time to just be learning every single function that the DAW offers. And so my perspective on Logic Pro is more of minimalism and getting the most out of very little. And that's exactly how I've built this course. It's in three modules. It kind of goes over the basis of logic and this general layout, the most important functions. And then I'll actually go over in real time how I write a piece of music using logic and also how I mix and master using logic as well. I'll show you where the stock plugins are. I'll show you the plugins that I personally use, my favorite sample libraries, all that stuff within logic, just to make the entire music writing workflow as seamless and smooth and efficient as possible. So if you're interested in that sort of thing, you can check the link down below. It's currently available for intro pricing this week. Um, if you join me in there, thank you very, very much. But either way, thanks so much for watching this video. I hope it's been helpful and I'll catch you in another video very, very soon. Take care.